What is going on everybody? Jay here from Maji and Jay. Today we got the unboxing, the Intuito Benchmark test, the fingerprint scanner test, and also the overview of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 from T-Mobile. This is the 64GB model and we can tell already from the box that it looks very similar to the Galaxy S7 Edge box with the exception of the names on the bottom side. Uh, this one also has an upgradable memory up to 256GB. Now it comes with the Snapdragon 820, the Adreno 530. It has 4GB of internal RAM, 64GB of internal memory as I already mentioned. And we do have that 5.7 inch Quad HD display. So yes, it's very similar to the Note 5 and also very similar to the Galaxy S7 Edge. So we really had to see what is the main difference on this particular model. So before we go through all that, let's go ahead and take a look here on the side of the box. We got the T-Mobile logo together with the S Pen uh, sketch. On the other side, we got the color. This is the Cerebral Titanium. Now, initially, I wanted to get the blue color version, but T-Mobile told me that it was back to order for about two months, so I didn't want to wait that long. And also, I'm looking forward to compare the Replica, which is coming very shortly, of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, and I'm pretty sure that you guys want to see the comparison as well. So on the back side here we have some of the uh, basic specifications. It is a 4G LTE device. It comes with that 5.7 inch Quad HD display as I mentioned earlier. It has a 12 megapixel rear facing camera with uh, dual pixel, I believe. It's a uh, new technology now by Samsung. It has a 5 megapixel front facing camera, IP60A certifications, which means that it is dust and water resistant. Then we got the iris scanner. And now this is one of the most exciting features of this device. And actually the reason as to why I got it, other than the S Pen being really cool as well uh, but yes the iris scanner is basically a fingerprint scanner for your eyes and it works very well this was first introduced by some Chinese phones out there and then they decided to adopt it and perfect it and that's exactly what they did so it comes again with the memory expansion up to 256 gigabytes. It has Samsung Pay integrated. Uh, it supports wireless charging and this time you can use fast charging with the wireless charging, something that we didn't have with the S7 Edge or the previous models. So that's very, very nice and I'm looking forward to get that little pad. So, so far that's um, all I'm going to say about the specs of this device. If you want to know more about it, I have left all these specifications below. So make sure that you guys check them out. So here, let's go ahead and open the box. We can see that it comes with this little cover. Uh, so usually get it and removing the cover we're going to see the Samsung logo so I believe that other carriers here in the United States and also other companies around the world they use the uh, other box which is basically this box but all the logos printed on the front so moving this to the side we're going to find the beauty here which is the Note 7 I'm surprised that they didn't call it Note 7 Edge so here we can see that curved display and this time you have less bezels than what we had on the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. And here I have a little comparison. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but yes, we do have more bezels on here. And it makes you feel like you have an edge to edge display. And they did a tremendous job. The panel looks beautiful. But we're gonna be talking about the phone a little bit more in details in just a moment. For now, let me just go ahead and set it aside and check and see what else comes inside of the box. So here we got a little divider, very common. We have some booklets and stuff. This is very boring. And we do have the little uh, SIM ejector tool. I just moved it by accident, but it's going to be exactly the same as the one that we saw on the S7 Edge. You have the SIM card. We also have here uh, the IMEI information in case you break it and you can't turn it on. We do have here the fast charger. And this one, I believe it's a little bit faster than the one on the S7 Edge. So here we have all the specifications of it in case you want to read it. So that's very neat. Now this time you have the brand new USB Type-C port and yes, I already took a sneak peek inside of this phone so I had to charge it and stuff in order to uh, finish this video on time. So here we can see that yes, it is the USB Type-C, very cool. Now this time guys, I did receive my earphones. I don't know why with my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, a lot of people were telling me uh, when I did the replica video comparison that their Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge box came with these earphones and I didn't receive them, but now with the Note 7, I am getting them. So I'm assuming I got a different batch, but that's very cool. Even though I don't use them, but sometimes on resale value, uh, these tend to uh, increase a little bit just by having these things on here. Very cool. Now. Here we have this little uh, USB port. This is so that you can transfer data. This one will be connected to your Note 7. You connect your USB port here, connect it to the other smartphone, and things will be transferring in no time. I did it with my S7 Edge, and literally, guys, it took about three minutes to complete, so it was extremely fast. Now on here, I believe we have a little adapter for micro um, uh, wires, and you can convert it into the USB type. So this is very neat and very useful as well. I mean, you can get these adapter very cheap on you know, the internet, but it's nice that they thought about it and they included it inside of the box. 
Next we got here a uh, tool so that we can remove the tips on the S Pen and we can replace them. Again, very nice to have them. And inside of the box we got nothing else. So now with the box set aside, let's go ahead and take a look here around the product itself. And on the front here we have the 5.7 inch Quad HD display, which means that you have a 2K resolution. On the top side we have the iris scanner, we have the ear speaker together with the Samsung logo, the 5 megapixel front facing camera, and also between the iris scanner and the ear speaker we have the proximity and light sensor. Uh, the front facing camera is a 5 megapixel one, and we do have a smaller camera on the side. This is also to do the function of the iris scanning with the other sensor, so uh, this is not to take photos, don't get them confused. And yes guys, as I said before, it's working flawlessly, and that's why I'm so excited about the Note 7. On the bottom side, we got the fingerprint scanner. We also have the typical menu key and back key. On the left hand side here, we find the metallic frame. Now this time, you guys can notice that it curves out on the back side and also on the front. So it gives you the illusion or the feeling that you're holding a very thin device, even though you're really not. This, I believe, is about 7.9 millimeters thick, so it doesn't change much. Also, it comes with a built-in battery of 3,500 milliamps. It has the volume rocker on this side and the power key on the other side, something that I do prefer on any smartphone because it makes it a lot easier and less confusing. Um, and then here again, we can see that metal frame that goes along with the power key. On the bottom side, we have the USB Type-C together with the main microphone, the 3.5 mm headphone jack, the loudspeaker, and finally the S Pen that has a very similar quality in build to the Note 5. And we can even see that we got that clicker on the side and it comes with the logos and everything. So again, this is the original, so don't think I'm doing a replica video here, guys. Sometimes I, I forget and I think I'm doing a replica video and I start talking about Samsung logos and such. But uh, the cool part about this particular phone that I do like a lot is that the S Pen doesn't go backwards anymore. And that also be getting more features into it. I'll be talking about that later on when we power on the device. On the back side, we find the 12 megapixel sensor camera and it has also optical image stabilization. It has the LED flash, very typical. Also the high rate monitor, the Samsung logo, the Galaxy Note 7 logo on there as well with some stuff on the very bottom of the phone. So getting this powered on, we're going to find the logos on here. Again, this time, um, you know, quite similar but not the same. Usually we get the opposite, we get a black screen with the white logos. I mean, this can change from, um, you know, different type of models that you might get out there like the international model the US model and such they can change so we can already see the beautiful Quad HD display again it gives you the illusion that it is edge to edge even though it is not completely um, I believe that this phone has about 80 or 20 percent bezel and 80 percent screen which is really cool now getting a look here at the front screen I can tell already that some of the toggle designs are very different on here than my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge and that was suspected already as we know already one of the main features or one of the new features of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 is the iris scanner as I mentioned earlier so let's go ahead and get started by testing it before we do it with the fingerprint scanner and yes later on we're going to test it with the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge so basically all you have to do is just pretend like you're going to unlock the device and after doing so you're going to find two different circles and also the sensor here is going to be activated so basically all you do is just look right up front to the Galaxy Note 7 and it will unlock for you now this time it worked even with the camera in front of me and normally without the camera it takes a fraction of a second to unlock which is almost the same as using your fingerprint scanner and now let me show you here quickly the fingerprint scanner so that you guys can see how fast it is so that's really cool I believe that you can still hold it while pressing on the home key. I mean, it's not as fast as the iPhone, to be honest with you guys. I already, you know, tried to do the comparison with my brother's iPhone 6S Plus, and the iPhone is still a little bit faster than this device. Now, the only phone that I know that beat it, the iPhone fingerprint scanner was the uh, OnePlus 3. And yes, I did test it and it beat it in every single way. But now still, it's a very accurate sensor, and here we got the um, operating system. This is the uh, TouchWiz from Samson, very typical. If you scroll here to the side, you find Flipboard. If you go here to the top, you find all the toggles. Now, some of the icons have been changed, as I said before, but that is expected because we have a new device, so a new operating system as well. Um, on here, we got settings, and again, they are very different, as you guys can tell. Uh, for example, now we don't have about phone. We also don't have the uh, input and the language change directly from here. For this, you have have to go to general management and now on here you're going to see all the language supported 
in this case we got a few I believe you have about 10 of them which is not a lot to be honest but that's because we have the US model right here and maybe the international model will support a lot more and then after getting here into the language and input if you go all the way to the bottom we're going to find the system information such as the Android version we have the baseband the kernel and all that private stuff that I'm showing here so uh, hopefully you guys won't hack me but yes this is the remaining of the information and it's only found here on general management something that we didn't see before um, also, if you go here into lock screen and security, you can change all the settings for the fingerprint, the irises, and all that good stuff. Now, um, as of right now, you can only record one um, iris, and that's a little bit of an inconvenience because you know you never know if you want another party to access your phone and you want to use the feature. You can only do it with one person, which is going to be most likely the owner of the phone. So yes, um, after entering the password, you can change those settings. In my case, I already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. And now here, getting a look at the entire operation system uh, here briefly I'm not going to be providing a full review you guys can tell that I have already installed a lot of my applications and most of these were already installed after doing the transfer directly from my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge to this device so it was very very quickly again it took about only three minutes so on this next portion of the video what I'm going to do next is download here the Antutu benchmark test so that way we can get a scoring I got a score already of about 140,000 and according to the Antutu benchmark test and the rankings this was the highest device ever so now I have downloaded the Antutu benchmark app as you guys can tell here so what we're going to do next is make sure that we have all the tasks killed on here and also I want to show you that the battery is completely full and that we are connected to the Wi-Fi exactly the same way as it's going to be on the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge so now let me open here the application and leave the phone on the background here for now and now we're going to go here into the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge and we're going to do exactly the same thing so let me go ahead and kill all the applications on here and you can see that the battery is actually full and also we are connected to the Wi-Fi and now let's open the application and see what scoring we got before on here so I believe it's right here there we go and now we're going to see the previous score I believe it has a history on here there we go this one was about 130,000 so what we're going to do is retest this again together with the Note 7 so I really hope you guys enjoy this So now we have completed the Antutu benchmark test on each device and it does appear like the winner is going to be the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge by a few thousands. If you look at the Note 7 it has 141,000 and the S7 Edge is 144,000. Now keep in mind that they're both running the same uh, internals like the Snapdragon 820, the Adreno 530, 4 gigs of RAM, the Quad HD display so they're both going to behave quite similar when it comes to performance. So this is a great way to notice if you guys really need the Note 7 uh, to consider it an upgrade from, you know, from a smartphone. In my opinion, I don't think it is. The only difference here is that we're getting the S Pen and also some tweaking in the operating system, but that's pretty much it. Now, something that I truly enjoy from any Note line device is the fact that we got the S Pen, which is very useful, especially when it comes to translating. In this particular case, I have um, added the tab, or actually it was there by default, of translate. So basically, this allows you to translate on any website any page anything that you guys see on your screen you can translate very easily and basically all you have to do let's say for instance you're inside of a website and you don't understand English and that's your only option then you will click on here okay you will open the translate tab and then on the top here you can select to what you want to translate it in this case is from English to Spanish and then you would just get the clicker here point at the word that you can't understand you will hold it there and wait until it's translated for you so there we go people it means gente in Spanish alright so that's very cool and again very useful especially when it comes to dealing with the Chinese sometimes you know they gave me certain websites that I don't understand so I have to translate them this way and that's a very useful tool to have 
Apart from the S Pen being on here, I believe that I'm getting the same performance as I do with the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. And the next testing we're going to do here with the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge is the fingerprint scanner. We're going to see which one is faster. And for this, we're going to kill all the applications once more just to make sure that we're doing a fair comparison on here. So um, basically I'm going to lock both of the phones and now we're going to turn them on by using the side key. And now in one, two, three, we can see that the obvious winner here is the Note 7. So yes, we do have a faster fingerprint, a more accurate fingerprint here on this device, which is expected. So let's go again, one, two, three. Actually, I waited too long. Let's go ahead and repeat that again. All right, here we go. One, two, and three. Once again, the winner is the Note 7. Now let's try pressing the home button. And now one, two, three. And again, the winner is the Note 7. So when it comes to the fingerprint scanner, the Galaxy S7 Edge is a little bit inferior. With this being said, I believe I have completed my agenda with this particular video. And on the comment section below, I want you guys to tell me if it's worth it to upgrade from the Galaxy S7 Edge to the Note 7. Again, in my personal opinion, I believe the only exception here is the S Pen. And other than that, the performance is almost identical, including the back facing camera, the front facing camera, the photo quality, everything is almost identical. Now we did see that the fingerprint scanner is slightly better on this particular model but other than that they perform almost the same so again if you guys have any questions you know exactly what to do just leave your comment below don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on my next one